All right, 100 plus miles, 100 plus miles with Bob, the Shield Knife and Tool Bob, which is their, one of their um, hunting knives. Um, let's see, so I had over 100 miles with it and <clears throat> tried to use it at a class. Um, and then I'll get to the, the good things and the bad things. Good things right off the bat, if you look at the packaging, which is pretty cool. Uh, they have their card, Shield Knife and Tool, Big Fourth Montana. This is a really good fire starter, this recycled shredded stuff. And they give you a little sticker. Um, Knives of the North series is uh, what this is part of. Full disclosure, I was given this when I went up there to speak. If you hear a chainsaw in the background, that is my awesome neighbor who is working on a fort for some kids. So that is even cooler right so inspired by the northern rockies that we call home we are the knives of the north that's pretty cool um they didn't pay me to do this or whatever that they sent me some swag when they sent me a replacement so this is what happened this sheath which is at an angle you see it i wore this running for over a hundred miles um, I didn't run 100 miles straight. I'm not in that kind of shape anymore. Um, but everyday use, everyday carry trumps a good idea fair. You can see the wear marks on the grommets um, <clears throat> to see if it's worth incorporating into my fixed blade lifestyle um, with the rifle or shotgun on my back the way I do PT. So what happened, I was teaching a class and I got up and it went <laughs> like that because the screw backed out now in all fairness that happens um and i talked to the owner well i, I sent text to the owner and they sent me a new set along with this hat and some other things so i figured i'd just do a video on it um they're not loctited from what i can tell so i'm just going to use the one screw out of it uh and see because these are a weak point in any type of Kydex system is the screws, especially in the north when you're talking about um, temperature extremes. And this is not a fault of them as much as it is. This is something you need to check. Because so you can see, I just hand tightened that. Let me pull the blade out so you can see. And then hand tightening, this one's already started to back out. Feel, see, that's one, two, three, four turns. Now, now <clears throat> I can Loctite this. I'm not sure what that's going to do with these grommets. They don't. They didn't tell me one way or the other. Um, but this is something that does happen in the north. It even happens on our roofs seasonally because of the thermal expansion and contractions. Roofing screws will back out of your roof. Uh, this is a, a common theme that happens in extreme climates, so it's something to be aware of. So what I do when I test stuff is I just roll it the way it is, like someone who's a novice gets it and then just run it to the ground until something fails. And um, that was the failure point. Now the blade, I mean, that's just a screw backing out. Um, very few people are going to run every day uh, with with a, a knife, a fixed blade. I was worried about the bounciness. It um, with my body type and with uh, riding this behind my dual magazine carrier on my waistline is fine. Um, not a battle belt, um, an actual gun belt, uh, leather gun belt with uh, two Glock uh, 17 mags on my left side and then this behind it. Um, when I run a fixed blade hunting, that's oftentimes what I will do. Or if I'm running a fixed blade on the farmstead. Oh, dog, stop. <laughs> oh, we just had camera difficulties from a puppy hitting the tripod, which is normal <laughs> to push him out of the way. So um, what will happen is, is, is that motion of it going back and forth, back and forth will cause some vibratory issues with the screws too. What I'll probably do, um, depending on what they say, is I probably will Loctite it. Um, another thing you can do 
is put a piece of tape, believe it or not, just a piece of tape over the screws and that'll keep the screws from backing out. That's another fix um, that I've used in the far north um, that helps dramatically uh, reduce that. Now you will get some stickiness and funkiness, whatever, but um, it is what it is. So <clears throat> easy fix if you have the screw. I could have zip tied it and kept going, but I was uh, coming down with a cold when I was teaching. Um, the blade itself uh, has been very durable and very tough. I used it on some TP poles. I've used it on uh, some knife fighting drills. If you're the type of person that wants to do a reverse grip pulling or pushing style um, fighting, the pulling style will be kind of different with that angled handle. However, for a utilitarian multi-purpose blade with the guard, works pretty good. I could maybe use some jipping up there. Um, I, I have every intention to skin uh, or harvest a deer and elk this year using this blade and, and butcher it um, because that's what it's designed for. Uh, they have a boning style knife too that looks more like a combat knife than this. And that would be really good for that job and it has dual loops for attachment. So, um, those of us at Everyday Use, Everyday Carry, Blades and Canon States where it's legal, um, sometimes we like to have them inside the waistband. So I'd love to see an option for that. Um, the durability of the steel has been really good. Let me grab my glasses again because I don't want to get it wrong. <clears throat> it is CPM 3V. This is steel, which is a pretty tough steel. Um, it, I haven't sharpened it yet. It's done a ton of impact and stabbing drills. We haven't had any major deformation of the point at all. Um, so that's good. Um, the finish has actually held up pretty good, all things considered with the amount of impact I've put it through. That's been a decent uh, blade. Um, is it, you know, hey, I can recommend 100%. It hasn't gone through winter yet with me. It hasn't gone through everything. But I can tell you the people um, uh, really um, have their hearts in the right place with a lot of the stuff. I've seen them with community outreach, so that's good. Um, this September being all kinds of months, you hear people say, well, it's this month, it's this month. Well, it's also... Um, Prevention month for people that are having issues. If you're having issues, dial 988. So let's see here. Uh, they've sent me some stickers. Aim for the head, the limbs grow back. Huh. That's interesting. Um, mountain Partisan. That's a thing. Let's see what we got here. Montana Mud. I do like that color combination that they have on their... Um, uh, I can't remember the nomenclature of the rifle, but they have a fold, a side folding um, lower that I've been um, testing and playing with. But I know a lot of their their firearms they have that Montana mud uh, cover, which or coloring, which is pretty good. Partisan, a member of an armed group formed to fight secretly against an occupying force. What's this one here? Time's up. Death to tyrants. It's an interesting sticker. A lot of times with these stickers, I put them in my gun safe or my toolbox. Welcome to Pineland. That's pretty cool. Let's see. Oh, another one of their knife one. Uh, another Big Fort Montana is the north. They want to ban. We make the stuff they want to ban. Yeah, they make some cool stuff there. Uh, made in Montana. I sent me a trucker's hat, which will that would be a, a, a gift to one of my top students um, for things I have coming up. Um, <clears throat> if you take a look at their website, Shield Knife and Tool, which I think I can put a link here um, on that I have before. Uh, and if you, you know, regardless if you buy their stuff or not, the screws is is a critical point of failure you see a lot of times I'll, I'll replace screws with rivets once something's where i want it because in the in the north especially on snowmobiles 
uh, screws will back out, Just especially going in and out of tents where it's hot and cold. That's one of the reasons when I was up in the Arctic, uh, matter of fact, you keep your weapons outside instead of inside so it doesn't sweat on the inside of the ammunition. Because uh, condensation evaporation happens inside the case. Um, but so far, 100 plus miles held up. Uh, of course, the blade's going to hold up good to that. It wasn't as floppy as I would think. Like, you think it'd be floppy this way, but what I found is it rid like this on my normal leather gun belt that I carry um, behind my mags. Uh, so I found that good. Um, I'm not sure what they're recommended. I know they said it's Molly compatible. What their recommended attachment is to put it on like their, I think it's called their bang bag, which is very similar to the Minuteman bag made by uh, Sojourn Gear, um, as well as integrating it to other systems that have PALS webbing, like your plates and stuff of that nature. Uh, the blade tech locks I found are really bulky and big, so I don't generally like using those. But there are some slimline versions. I'm not sure what they will offer on their site that uh, that is compatible with this, but uh, it is Molly compatible with this. And of course, you can take 550 cord and attach stuff all over the place. Um, but watch the screws, and you can see like these two. That's tight. That's tight. Um, you can put tape or glue or Loctite. Um, I'm not sure what degrades the, the rubber cushion on that though. So um, you'd have to ask them on what works. I do like to see drain holes in Kydex or any type of sheath. I'm a big fan of drain holes. So some companies come out with nylon gear and the drain holes are way too small. They have a big bag and a tiny, tiny, tiny drain hole which if you've ever taken a dump into the drink with uh, on a canoe trip or something, those bags become boat anchors real quick. Uh, so having drain holes on your stuff is a really good idea. The blade itself <coughs> works really good uh, for carving tasks. Um, I've done a lot of chopping and slashing and stabbing with it. Some of our self-defense knife um, drills that we do and it's held up really, really well. Um, so check out the Shield Knife and Tool Bob, um, a, a quality knife made by made in America by a, a Montana company. And also check out the other stuff they have. It might fit into your system, and it might not. I might not get a dime from them and that kind of thing. They did give, send me this for free, and then when I told them with the, the screw issues, they, they sent these back and sent me some stickers and a hat which is uh, some of that stuff's kind of cool, kind of funny. Um, if you get the chance to come up to Big Sky Country and uh, visit their facility, it's pretty cool. Um, they have a whole line of all kinds of stuff that's neat, um, from textiles to firearms, and they even have a, a gun shop there. I remember seeing a kiosk for a silencer shop even in their um, uh, gun, gun shop side of the place. So. If you're in Big Sky Country over on the east side of Flathead Lake over by Big Fork, stop in and go take a look for yourself. They got a lot of cool stuff there. Awesome looking facility. And there's a lot of cool Americans that work there. If you get a chance, stop by and look at their website. Carry rucksacks, not feelings bags. And test your kit, check your screws before winter. Don't wanna run around with a screw loose, right? Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Carry rucksacks, not feelings bags. Shalom.